Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury for the Nintendo Switch, and see how it compares both in terms of its presentation and its available features to the original release of Super Mario 3D World on the Nintendo Wii U. Now, for those of you that don't know, Super Mario 3D World first released back in 2013 for the Wii U, and was highly praised upon release, thanks to its fantastic level designs, visuals, and well-implemented semi-3D design. I say semi-3D because, unlike more traditional 3D platformers, 3D World's level environments still feature some locked scrolling camera perspectives that will smoothly transition in designated areas from side to side, front to back, and even vertically. It's the last of Nintendo's great Wii U titles to finally be carried over to the more successful Nintendo Switch platform. And, like other Wii U ports that I've covered, there's many interesting, albeit minor, changes that have been made. Because of this, I want to spend a bit more time covering the changes to the gameplay and features, along with a spoiler-free look at the biggest addition to the game, Bowser's Fury, to help give you a better idea of what's included in the package. So, starting off, let's briefly go over the alterations to the presentation. Just like with other Wii U releases on the Switch, 3D World doesn't really offer too many visual improvements. In fact, it may appear identical to most. However, if you look really closely, there are a few very minor changes that you can begin to pick apart. First off, the game's resolution, both in docked mode and in its portable handheld mode, has been increased. When docked, Super Mario 3D World outputs at only 720p on the Wii U, whereas the Switch version is now targeting 1080p, with a few instances where it may drop a bit to maintain its performance. It may not seem like a lot considering the resolutions we're used to seeing on this channel, but it does help to clean up the image significantly in a game that already looked close to perfect. The only downside with this high resolution though is that jagged edges along straight surfaces like railings and wood panels are now even more apparent than ever. There's even some distracting flickering that can occur at certain angles, usually with background objects and textures. In portable mode, the aliasing isn't as noticeable, and I also didn't notice any of that flickering, suggesting that it may have just been some sort of fault with the dynamic scaling being used. Additionally, you can expect a bump to resolution in this mode, from the previous 480p up to a locked 720p. Regardless of which mode you play in, the game's performance still seems to maintain its locked 60fps from before, with the only hint of a frame drop being this one instance where I collided with a group of Goombas. But upon later review, it seems that this was an intentional skipped frame, to sort of emphasize the power of the hit, instead of an actual slowdown in the performance. So, other than the increase to the resolution, there has been practically no change to the game's visual design. Everything from the character models, the environmental textures, and even the effects are identical, with perhaps a few more particles when running through the grass or jumping into levels from the world map. All the skyboxes and backgrounds are carried over, the depth of field and bloom effects are still in play, and shadows from the clouds continue to roll across the fields. I did find a few weird shadows being cast by some of the floating boxes. But after hitting these and changing them to their off state, the shadow reverts back to normal, suggesting that it's just some unintended visual bug that can hopefully be fixed with a future patch. But otherwise, the visuals haven't really changed all that much, so let's instead shift our focus now to the changes that have been made to the gameplay. Now, when starting this, I fully expected the base game to play the same between both versions. But right from the start, it became clear to me that Nintendo had decided to significantly speed up the action with the player's average speed being increased by about 50%. This becomes apparent immediately, as trying to sprint through the level is suddenly much easier, with Mario able to leap huge distances that he probably couldn't before, and at times, it almost feels like it's going too fast. But after playing around for a bit and getting used to this new speed, it does seem to suit the game's overall feel much better, and it's difficult to even go back to the old version. They even altered some of the obstacles so they react faster, and adjusted some of the cameras, giving players more time to plan out their moves while dashing across courses. Other changes that may not be quite as noticeable include the ability to initiate the roll maneuver while still in the air, which can be useful in avoiding a deadly fall or speeding up a descent, more responsive crouch jumps, and smoother entry into the game's many pipes, especially the glass ones. They even added in the option to play the Captain Toad bonus stages with other players, unlike before where these stages were locked to single player. Other changes that have been made are more of a result of the change to the hardware itself. 
the Wii U's biggest selling point was its handheld tablet and stylus attachment, allowing players to directly manipulate the world by looking down at the small screen and touching the surface. This feature was incorporated quite a bit throughout the course of 3D World, with in-out blocks that could be toggled, plants and trees that could be interacted with, and even the ability to give some pats to Plessy the Dinosaur. Considering the Switch, when played in its docked mode, doesn't have any sort of touchscreen option, I feared that these features would have been removed, much like how the touchscreen content was removed from Mario Maker 2. But instead, they have been reworked to use the Switch's motion controls instead. At any time, players can click the R key to cause a cursor to appear on screen, that can then be moved around by tilting the controller, and triggered by pressing and holding the R key again. It's not necessarily the best substitute, but it still works perfectly fine, and allows the game to retain its charm to some degree. Other controller-based mechanics, like those annoying propeller platforms that required you to blow into the Wii U's microphone, have also been changed, and are now just lifts that move up and down automatically. The Switch version of 3D World also comes with a new photo mode, that can be accessed most of the time from the D-pad. In this snapshot mode, players can change filters, adjust the camera angle, and remove the heads-up display to take nice high-quality images of their favorite moments and they can even drop in collected stamps directly into the world to enhance shots further, making stamp collection still a worthwhile endeavor for fans. But other than those changes, 3D World is pretty much exactly the same game. So now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, Bowser's Fury, easily the biggest selling point for this new release. Having not really watched any of the trailers or promotional material for this game, I was under the impression that this would just be maybe one or two more stages for 3D World, featuring some new themes. But I was surprised to find that Bowser's Fury could pretty much be its own standalone game. It takes Super Mario 3D World's graphics engine and gameplay mechanics and reworks them into a much more freeform, open world experience, similar in some ways to the more recent Super Mario Odyssey game. Only, instead of jumping into a hat and flying off to a new stage when you finish, every course in Bowser's Fury is contained within a single, seamless open world. It's not necessarily as big as a full-fledged Mario game, but it's still jam-packed with content. Now, I don't want to discuss the story in too much detail, but I do want to at least set up the main objective for this game. In Bowser's Fury, Mario finds himself sucked into a mysterious world, with a giant ink-splattered Bowser raining down balls of fire. And as always, it's up to Mario to fix it all. To do this, players are tasked with climbing up vertical structures spread out across an inky void and activating lighthouses that will deal damage to the Godzilla-like Bowser. Each of these lighthouse areas serve as their own open-ended courses to play through, with plenty of enemies, obstacles, and collectibles to discover, including new Cat Shine shards that, when combined, form Cat Shine tokens, which are necessary for turning Mario into a sort of giant Super Saiyan cat to fight Bowser one-on-one. -on -one. After activating enough lighthouses and giving Bowser a beating, players can hop onto a nearby Plessy and ride them across the ocean towards a distant island, which is the equivalent of traveling to a new world in other Mario games. Only it's seamless, with players always in full control. What's more, this mode also changes the way that the camera functions, with no more locked camera angles, and power-ups can now be hoarded in a sort of inventory screen, allowing players to easily swap between owned powers whenever they see fit. It's a really well-made expansion, and I think with this, and the already fantastic experience offered in the base 3D World game, that there's more than enough to justify the steep asking price, especially for players who never got a chance to play the original. That being said, I do wish the visuals were a bit cleaner. The aliasing is just bad, especially in the Bowser's Fury expansion, where the problem is exasperated even further. And I would also like to have seen more 3D World courses added in to make replaying that portion of the game more appealing for returning players. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to take a moment to play a few extended gameplay sequences for you without any narration. Which game do you think has the superior audio and sound design?
And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Super Mario 3D World on the Nintendo Switch is a solid addition to the Switch's impressive catalog of titles. There's some minor technical hiccups here and there, but it's mostly a faithful port of the Wii U Classic, and it offers a great new expansion to experience for returning players as well. I do feel that the price is a bit steep, especially for returning players, as the base game is pretty much identical to the one that we played back in 2013. But if you're looking for a really good platformer on your Switch, then you'd be hard pressed to find one better than Super Mario 3D World. But what do you guys think? Are these few changes and the Bowser Fury add-on enough to justify double dipping with this game? Or were you expecting more? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.